Hello everybody, welcome to the second semi-final. Again, we've got a Bash versus Elf matchup. We've got Gadenik streaming it on his channel. Having to restream, that's the way to do the commentary because there is no Cabal Vision function. Uh, Gadenik with two, nearly 2.3 million um, Elven Union. Andri with 1.6 million dwarves. There's about, well, there's exactly 700 TV difference in between the two. And in the booth with me is Squirrel Dude. Hello. Howdy. And we're about to find out what Andri is going to try and get to balance this out. I have no idea what you can do with sometimes. He buy you down as dwarves. Well, I guess they have Griff now, so maybe something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Griff and Morg. Mm hmm. Um, you'll probably still get Morg, right? Because it's three dice with Mighty Blow plus two. So like... Since Morg is completely busted. <laughs> yeah, if, even though he's got a team filled with Tackle Mighty Blowers, he'll probably still take Morg. <laughs> but yeah, Griff's an, Griff's an interesting shout, isn't it? You have something elfy to take them on. It's totally a very good result of the streamlining of the star player rules so that you have categories and not just assigning them to teams individually. It was... <laughs> which was done so that you could just add teams to the game and not have to define all of their stars and then edit all the stars backwards, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes. This is just a totally good outgrowth that dwarves can get Griff and Deep Throat. <laughs> it's not Deep Throat. <laughs> you don't have a star player name in front of you, so you can't prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, I mean, Deep Root can, is, is rude enough, I guess, but, uh, right. Hello, Hancock. And, yeah, like, this is, it's not a good Dwarf team, is it? But, you know, we've seen, we haven't seen teams this bad win, but we've seen lots of, like, min-max Dwarves, like, cause a lot of problems to Wood Elves in, in Chalices down the line. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, this is a really bad Dwarf team, isn't it? Like, it's, it's really, it is really poor. Um... Looks like he's got Morg. He might have Griff as well. That looks like Griff, doesn't it? Yeah, Morgan Griff. Yep, Morgan Morgan Griff. Morgan Griff. You see, typically have a full 11 guard, which I do not think this one has. So. No. Yes, there's Morg, there's Griff. I mean, they're, they're pretty good players, right? And yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's still got seven guard. And he's still got uh, some stand firm. Three stand firms. So he stops the one turn with the three stand firms as long as he don't right. get cast. Are you sure that's stand firm or not Juggernaut, Jim? I am sure, yeah. I'm sure. I can tell them apart. The 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 uh, stand firm is like an orc, and Juggernaut is a minotaur, a minotaur, a minotaur. Yeah, yeah minotaur. <laughs> mm. Um. So it is possible you can you you can tell like once you get used to it, and you know, and you will get used to it. Um. Because humans are good at getting used to things, but that is no excuse for absolutely terrible game and icon design. <laughs> I actually, I think, I think it was a good. I, I genuinely think it was actually a good idea, <laughs> because you know, at the end of the day, um, being four hundred TV down sucks. <laughs> it really, really, really sucks. And the problem that Games Workshop games have always had, like games like Necromunda, More Time, Blood Bowl, you know, you want to reward the people who are winning, and uh, you know, by, by getting money and stuff and improving their team and all this kind of stuff, but then. You know what happens is you end up with the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, don't you? You know, it's like you know, if somebody like you know, say there's a local league and there's Nick with seven Australian people. Uh, not that Australian people are worse than anyone else, but you know, <laughs> random people playing in a league with Gade Nick, for example, or myself, right back in the day. Um, we are better than everybody else at Blood Bowl. And then so, so but we're already we're already better, and that means that we win more games, and we get more money, we get more money, and we get more skills, and then so then we get a bigger advantage, you know, outside of the mechanical advantage of playing the game, right? Now now our teams get progressively better, and the matches get even easier than they already would be, and that just keeps snowballing up more and more and more and more. Thanks, Jack Bull. <laughs> Luckily, there was nobody hanging around with a crossbow trying to kill me while I was delivering it. Um, so, yeah, so so the fact that, like, stars are way, way better now, I think it's fine. Now, obviously, it's not fine for tabletop tournaments, but they can just ban them or whatever, can't they? So it's fine. Yeah, I actually don't think it's as bad. I just think the specific implementation that allowed for dwarves to be getting things like Griff and Deep Throat isn't really an ideal implementation specifically, but I think broadly making stars 
a little bit better and more available is good because star players are pretty fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's good that Morg is the best player in the game, right? Like, that's actually good. Instead of him just being rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> he was just claw on bait before. Now he's an absolute monster that tears teams to shreds. I don't know if they need the special abilities, but um, I don't know if <laughs> well, they, they, you need they, they, to introduce all these unique special abilities and singular use skills. For I love Lambolti! Like I love Eat Glass. I mean, I mean, don't worry, don't worry, uh, Squirrel. They, they won't get them on, on Blood Bowl 3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> G'day, Cocky. Why is Griff looking like a rabbit? Well, he's Imperial Nobility now, allegedly, isn't he? So that's why he looks idiotic and has an eagle and stuff. He's a pet eagle. He has a pet eagle. He's basically Peacekeeper. He's yeah, John Cena's Peacekeeper. Is, it feels a little bit um, like how they've had el elves and undead, and even though they also then allegedly split those teams up into, like, Vampires and necromantic and dark elves would also, it start humans are gonna also start to feel a little bit like a kind of a weird team, like a vestige of an older system rather than a team that's unique. Once you start doing things like introducing imperial nobility and probably at some point an actual Bretonian team, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't think they'll ever have a Bretonian team, but maybe like they've had them in the past. But Bretonia yeah. seems to be something they're moving away from. But then Blood Bowl is a bit unique, right? Like they've got the Renegades still, and they've got Underworld still. So maybe they will, uh, maybe they will bring back Bretonians at some point. So, I, I understand. Well, you know, there's always the fear that we're going to get Sigmarines in the game at some point. So, oh, that would be brilliant. <laughs> Jim would love it. Strength. Movement five, strength four, agility two, or agility two plus, passing ability two plus, or value ten plus, just super marines. Yeah, and like they'd count as three players or something, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, interesting. It's ogres, but without any of the drawbacks. Yeah. Interesting going for the hit here. Um, but yeah, not not trying to break through, just move up. Hit and scan for Interesting. I guess you have to hit on the side, so nice placement of the stand from by Andrew on the outside, so there. Yep. Yup. Oh, he's going in a little bit. If you're mad about dwarves getting one dice piles, I'm going to assume Andrew is playing one die, playing dwarves, because he's playing dwarves now, so that's the only reasonable conclusion. You just haven't played enough dwarves to know that all dwarf one dice blocks pals. Especially if they have to reroll when they don't roll pal the first time. Yep. Look at this glorious sneaky get foul. It does well, it stuns him. That... Double G of I to foul. That's that's what we've come to. <laughs> well, he has six rerolls like Eliod, so Mm. He's actually only got five rostered, but yeah, he must have won one at kickoff. And uh, yeah, like, but I mean, that, it's just, it's still like you wouldn't be doing it if you didn't have sneaky get dirty player, right? Like that's the yeah. thing. It's uh... also it is a case where because they moved to a friendly match, this is um, almost certainly a result of moving to friendly matches after um, playing an open ladder season. As the players for the teams who had a high team value were like, well, time to spend all this fucking cash. <laughs> with five rerolls, five spares, because I can't use it otherwise, and I can't use players that I'll need to replace. So exactly, yeah. Blow up. Nick blow up. only went to fifteen players because he could, so he could induce a star player versus Elliot if he faced him, because he's still like three hundred TV below Elliot. Um, but that, so he actually couldn't go up to sixteen. But you know, like, well, he, I mean, he could, but he didn't. That, that's why he didn't. Um, and yeah, like there's a lot of randoms have been taken. Uh, the frenzy, for example, on Nick's team was a was a random. I don't know where that frenzy player is, but there is a frenzy player that took frenzy on a random, and like I think shadowing and stuff like that. Uh, frenzy is on the ground up northwest. Ah, yes. Think you get dirty player. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so that, that that frenzy was a random and stuff. So yeah, there's a few things like that. Griff does look pretty terrible, yeah, but that, that's what the model looks like, you know, the, the Citadel miniature looks like that. It's just he's hes a bit small, a bit slight for a strength four player. Oh, he just, he just like a little, he does a little shuffle, doesn't he? He doesn't have any shuffle, yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> um, oh, 
barotrauma at night. Oh, that was hilarious, the barotrauma. So we do have the two plus through here through with, with no tackle. So I guess he's going to go straight through this turn. Uh, yep. Yep, bit of a mistake from Andre. I mean, this is hard though, right? It's really hard to like not make a mistake against the Dakar. And as much as yeah. as much as people for some reason love to say it's only good versus bad players, that's completely untrue. <laughs> because even if you're a good player, it's very easy to not play perfectly every single turn. And if you don't play perfectly every single turn, then this happens and the whole team is through. It is weird how it does seem to induce a um, slightly higher number of mistakes than this than a regular screen um, does. Though maybe it's just because a regular screen, people just punch through anyway with a couple of blocks. But well, well there's no screen. motivation to go through, right? That's the thing. Yeah. That it, you yeah. don't have to play perfectly every turn when there's limited space in behind you and it's it's hard to get in through. But now when you have this, when you're faced mm -hmm. with this is the, the 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 result, you have to play perfect. Yeah. Yeah, obviously. I mean, snake, snake and crucial dodges is going to be terrible, no matter what. No matter what elven offense you employ, right? Like, badly timed snakes are going to going to kill you, whatever happens. There is, you know, some element I know K-Fox brought this up in Crystal Hunter brings it all the time, where because of if you're playing the deck is so far back, snakes can be more punishing than if, you know, you're doing it in the middle of the opponent's field in terms of allowing a counter score, but in the middle of the field, the, the odds are very similar yeah and you know against the case of that um a deck inherently you're going to have typically more players around the ball when you fail the snake than um otherwise yeah yeah you had to have somebody there i, I might have put the first one there uh, this side step i might put there um but yeah like that's the thing like it's very unlikely that you have that you're backed right up right like you know like uh Nick went forward that turn, so he was he was never back right up into his end zone, was he? It's it, mm -hmm. it is unlike it's unlikely that you get backed up, uh, and he can just keep using rerolls, can he? Like I mean, he rolled a double one there, I think. Yeah, he did roll a double one, but like the fact that you can just keep using rerolls on the on the breakthrough turn is crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's actually really absurd. Um, it. It's a very interesting mechanic just because it is a bit max max in the sense that if you're or win more or if you're already like ahead in a turn like this, you can't just get more and more and more ahead. Mm. But it also makes the comeback turn much where you're like, I gotta roll a four and then a three and then it's I get to roll it's like, well alright, well you get a reroll for all of it. It's not mm. quite so hard. You can do a bit more crazy stuff. Or you have better odds on the crazy stuff to get yourself back into a game. Yeah, it's it's super interesting. I I'm on the fence as to, you know, its impact. Like, but you know, some people, it, it's interesting. You know, some people like knee jerk into oh, it's a terrible r rule, which is I think is you know pretty stupid opinion. Um, but then also it's pretty stupid to like knee jerk into it's the best thing to ever happen. <laughs> yeah. um, it just is what it is. Yeah, I'm it? not sure if it's good or bad. Like jump, I think is just good. I think jump was just a good change. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. There's an element of drama within each turn that making rerolls, you can use, being able to use rerolls multiple times, um, or being able to use multiple rerolls, kind of moves. Yeah, um, I think it feels better though, right? I think it, I think yes. the main thing is it feels better, even regardless of whether you know it makes like you know key turns like for rats and, and stuff like sacks and one turns, regardless of whether it makes them easier or harder. Obviously, there's a strength four player here. Uh, regardless of that, or the game balance issues, or anything like that, at the end of the day, it just it it really feels shit. Where like the first dice you roll, you use your reroll, and now you're at the mercy of the dice for the rest of the turn. Like that just feels terrible. Yeah. And the fact that that doesn't happen anymore is is I think it is a good thing. Um. <laughs> Yeah, Shtick, the problem is, like, Morg is, like, that good. And his team is so bad, right? Uh, Andri's team is so bad. Like, maybe if Andri had an 1800 dwarf team, then Morg isn't so good, right? But he doesn't have the mighty blow. Like, he's got no mighty blow on his team at all. So I think I think he kind of has to go, mate. I think he has to go Morg here. Also, attrition fireballs are incorrect, always. 
Yeah, it's never... pre pretty much always, yeah. 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 I mean, you know, Blood Bowl so always do it sometimes, but like Trisha Fireballs are just the odds are so much worse than the high end results can make you think they are. Like, yeah. You're really hoping for an armor break. <laughs> it's like a good result with the fireball. Yeah. Because, like, Morg isn't just the attrition, right? He's a strength yeah. 6, like... Agility 3 plus, armor value 10 guy that's a roadblock, and you can't base because he just kills you. Like, he's really good. Yeah. He's more than the attrition boys. Yeah. But he's not blitzing with him. Is he hitting with Griff? Can Griff get to the ball? He can. Is he going to? No. Nope. Probably should. Problem Probably is, he gets surfed. No, he's got fen mm -hmm. Fend, hasn't he? Oh, he still gets surfed because if he follows. I don't know if he's got an extra move. Mm. Well, he, he wasn't blitzing with Griffiths. Blitzing with not Morg for some reason. <laughs> yeah. So, on the topic of Morg, he's not just an attrition blitz. That's correct, but he is an attrition blitz that if you're going to do attrition blitz, it, it should be Morg. It should yep. almost always be Morg in this matchup. Um, yeah. The tackle probably isn't that much better than getting a third dice and the additional plus one on Mighty Blow. Yeah. Mm, Especially against our value seven. Like, it's just absurd. It's absurd yep. value. Yep. Mm, use that to get his guy a two plus out. It's it's just not as it's it's worse than it's worse than Morg. Morg three dicing every turn is a valid way to win. I mean, I'm sorry, Shtick, you're not gonna. I mean, you might convince somebody, but you're not gonna convince me that anything that that a wizard is better than Morg. <laughs> you're probably not gonna convince me that anything's better than Morg, but definitely not a fucking attrition wizard. <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> showing the math of how attrition wizards don't do anything, but I have done the math. It's fucking depressing mm. how bad it is. The, a wiz is not better than Griff either, by a long shot. By a long shot. Now, a wiz does have a force multiplication factor where maybe a wizard and Griff is better, because it means you have recovery on the wizard that's terrifying now. But... Griff is made much better with a wizard. Morg is made slightly better with a wizard because it's a wizard, so now Morg can just get anywhere on the wizard turn. But um, they, the wizard is not better than Griff, especially with dwarves, who without Griff don't have recovery to take advantage of the wizard, and without Morg don't have the guard and strength necessary to take advantage of the wizard on the fireball positionally. So you can't really get one or the other and it'd be quite so effective. Yeah. Oh, so he did that nice chain. I think he should have started with that, right? He could have started with that, and then he's probably regretting it now because he could have started with that, and then he could he could have he could have then like get another hit with Morg to then push him into mm -hmm. there, and then and then he could have maybe uh could have maybe hit the ball with Griff somehow. Mm -hmm. um, that could be it with Griff gets, here. Gets yes, he can do some um, dodging around, right? He hasn't used his blitz yet. He has not used yeah. his blitz. So, oh, yeah, so Griff can yeah, get Griff. through. Okay. Yeah, Griff can get around over the top. There he goes. Well, it was good enough, but uh, now Griff gets surfed. <laughs> so, well done, Griff. I don't think following there was correct, but I guess he's out of movement, so. Mm. I mean, if he doesn't follow, you get, like, he gets surfed. Like, this is an extra square to push him <laughs> to surf him, isn't it? So. Unfortunately, whatever happens, you're getting surfed, basically. Then makes it a little tricky, I suppose, with needing three pushes. Yeah. I don't know why he's pushing this way, so... He's pushing that way so you can push back onto the... Uh, oh, the yes, yeah, of course. Final hit. Yeah. yeah, of course. Oh, and he's got a strength four to do it. That, that's what it was bamboozling me, but yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's very true, Fimey. Yes, Crush it was better than Morg. <laughs> yep. And there we go, Griff is served. 
that was the problem like with with oh my god that was the problem with going for the sack any turn was that you know that griff gets surfed if you do go for it so i wouldn't have i personally wouldn't have gone that way <laughs> to get surfed and obviously that was good play by nick making sure that griff gets surfed mm -hmm. if he does yeah. go for the ball and that's i mean don't say it's over but it's that's... only 300 team value now he's just short 300 team value and he didn't get a sack so yeah yeah that is man that is a that is a harsh result yeah it was very unlucky it was very unlucky but like so you know maybe it was worth going for it but like not not earlier right it was, it was why i wouldn't have gone earlier this late but then what even happens if you power him right like that's the, that's the problem yeah <laughs> like what even happens if it works not a lot like what happens if you what happens if your attrition fireball works nothing he's got 15 elves <laughs> like you're not going to win this game by bashing off the you, pitch you hit nine players with an armor value seven with a fireball hitting half the time you'll get an average number of casualties of 0. 0.64 <laughs> there you go <laughs> That is some Something damning dumb. maths for a for an attrition fireball, isn't it? Did Nick Space Cadet? Nah, that wasn't a Space Cadet. That was that was just probably ill advised desperation. Like it was a decent move Defending by Andrew to get it, but it just easy. wasn't that good to get it, was it? Unfortunately, like even if you powered him, what happens? Nick targeting the stand firm. Probably should have targeted him earlier. Oh my god. Nick jumping out of his seat. Obviously apothecary for Andre there. The stand the three stand firm players are his good players in this matchup, right? Stopping the yeah. stopping the one turn. He has to keep them on the pitch. Mm -hmm. They're crucial, not just I mean, Andrew's basically already given up this drive, but you can't it would be very sad to get a nice, clean, eight turn stall and then like, well, you missed one stand firm player, so anyway. See you next. See you next season. I just get a one turn to end the game. No yeah. overtime for you, because the yeah. dwarves, their win result, their win way is, or their path to winning is getting to overtime after having done a whole bunch of damage to the elves. Like, that's the yes. way they win. Yes, and having Griff and Morg on the pitch for eight turns of your drive helps with that, <laughs> and having yeah. eight blitzes with Morg in the first half helps with that. So, uh, you know, and having Griff for the one turn helps with that. So, there's lots of there's lots of things that. Uh, that Griffin Morg help with, and um, oh, the scroll was this from from a while ago, um, Fimea? Yeah, it was about it was about like the what's it called probability chains, you know, of like if this happens, then you then you reroll this, and then if this one happens, then you don't need to roll anymore and stuff. That's what it was, wasn't it? It was partially just me looking to see, as a reminder, of how obscenely complicated uh, Blood Bowl three or Blood Bowl actually is, which is. Just complicated enough that you can figure it out, but it was um, looking at doing like a two plus five plus or a two d two dice block five plus versus a four plus four plus three plus or something like that. It was a game in a random replay, and then diving into whether on the first minus two dice block you should reroll a result that's a both down, or you should keep the both down so you can then do the five plus four plus. Mm. And it's actually better to keep the both down, which was weird. And kind of surprised you don't want to reroll it because the chances of turnover are so high and the chance of and the benefit of keeping the reroll on the five plus is actually nice because once you get past the five plus it's not so hard hmm I, I wonder how clever somebody would have to be to do that in their heads <laughs> i imagine very very clever uh i'm not sure how much it would be cleverness so much as it would be a lot of experience and practice doing that so Doing that kind of math, it's it's not super hard. Um, like I mean, I was able to do it just a pencil and paper, more or less. Um, yeah, but, but a pencil and paper, like doing it in your head before you choose yeah. which which uh, which path to take. <laughs> yeah, I think you'd have to be a pretty much a genius to do that. To do that specific math, maybe. But again, yeah. I mean, a lot of we've talked you talked about before, but 
Blood Bowl is a game where you learn the patterns and you learn the probabilities and you just kind of internalize them without knowing the specific odds. Because yeah. You know, they all looked at it. They were like, we can't, I haven't done the math, but we both think the minus two dice is more correct here. We're not really sure why. We couldn't tell you why, but it was correct, though. You have no idea why it was correct. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, isn't it? You should do that, sticker, yeah, especially if you're playing me. No, not if you're playing me. That's what that bloody burn did, didn't he? Did the firm mm -hmm. attrition fireball and just killed my team and my World Cup qualification. <laughs> Absolute, the legend of burn. Absolute scumbag. Because I guess burner would be too on the nose what that account was. <laughs> Flippin' burn. Well, so there. Now, now this is how... Andre can win the game, right? If he if he spends all eight turns bashing down. Um, why has he got why has he got the blodger on the LOS? Why is he blocking with the blodger on the LOS and picking up on the sneaky gate? Oh, it's a one turn. Okay, right, it's turn eight. Okay. Yeah. No, he's not going to get a one turn because it's, well, that is a movement eight dwarf. I'm assuming because it's a uh, level. I think it's only Why move seven. Right? It's only what move was seven. that? What was the point of that? You have mo just take a three dice with Morg on an unskilled player. <laughs> yeah, I've got no idea what he was playing at. Hit with Morg. No idea. Frog your DP sneaky kit. That's a good idea, isn't it? Screw the ball. <laughs> I'm just gonna frog your sneaky kit and kill him. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's actually brilliant. Oh, Gadenic yeah. using the Fantastic D. Love to see it. Always love the Fantastic D in the morning. <laughs> well, hey. And yeah, Frog is sneaky good. And then foul it with your dirty player is sneaky good. <laughs> yes, Take yeah, win the, win, the, win the sneaky git war <laughs> by turning his into a frog. <laughs> now, there's too much value on, on ball carriers, sadly, because loads of people don't realise it's got no hands. <laughs> yeah. So, so now, anyway, sorry, I didn't realise that was a one-turn chance. So now, now this is uh, Andre's chance. If you can bang out loads of people with Morg, uh, grind down the pitch, you know, somehow keep hold of the ball, maybe lose it once and get it back somehow. I, you know, it's it's hard, right? Nick's got some got some pretty cool players, but if you can just keep it a big meat cube, bang out loads of guys. He's got he's got two mighty blows and Morg. There's, there's half a chance for him here. Get to over, like yeah. you know, keep his stand firms. Keep get to overtime, win the toss, and the, you know and there's four elves also, left. and then hope the elves don't one turn in time or in regular time, because in overtime now you get a chance to one turn again. Yes. In nature at all. Yes. For more blood bowl, which. Uh, <laughs> You know he's got. The, he does have three stand firm. Yeah, he could have done with more stand firm, couldn't he? Really. Stand firm is a skill that isn't. It's not as good as people say it is, but it is. It's not good on when you have it on one or two players. It, it becomes very annoying when you have it on like five or six, though. Mm -hmm. So you just suddenly stop being able to play blood. Bowl. I don't know how you would make overtime good. Um, they keep trying, and it doesn't quite seem to work. But no. it's a hard thing to solve. Doesn't work in football either. <laughs> no. Nope. To be fair, doesn't work in American football or football. Yeah. So they go Kaz from Morg. Lovely. Oh, like I said I think the college overtime rules are generally considered to be pretty okay. So does Nick go in? It's not really. It doesn't really look good for him to go in. So I'm guessing not. <laughs> okay. Oh. oh man. This could be a. Uh... 
This could be the end for the dwarves, couldn't it? 10 v 10. Really good start from the luckiest man in Blood Bowl. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very helpful for the um well the dwarves can't score the figures are getting out, but man, being down players was just Oh, it's just so miserable. Yeah, it's it's, it's so horrendous. Much. It's so unfair. <laughs> they have all these advantages. <laughs> and then yeah. they outnumber it. Like with the disadvantage being their armor seven. But yeah. if they've got more players than you, then they don't have the disadvantage. Yeah. And it is again um exacerbated with the format being friendly matches, so Nick was able to just buy up spare players. Versus teams that are bloating value who can't really do that. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Kind of just a limitation to level three and how we've had, how Yak and the folks have had, have had to try and make this a tournament that can't work. Indeed. And yeah, testament to them, you know, they've, they've done their best and they've given, they've given the fans something, haven't they? Nice bit of guard were, assists yeah. there. I mean, he rolled a 10 anyway, but still. Two assists mm -hmm. from the guard, two extra assists that he wouldn't have had in the old rules. Amazing what a difference that makes, honestly, for like dwarves um, and like you know bash teams in general. Like it makes such a big difference, right? Like that one assist foul, never really worth doing, but a three assist foul, right? Yeah, it's more noticeable with dwarves because they get more guard than other bash teams, don't they? But yes, I'm not sure. I'm not sure you needed to buff guard, but I do kind of like the, the change, even if it was really just a change because of how they did the like the wording with like assist right yes yeah it's just I, an I, outgrowth of that rather than yeah i'm not sure it was intentional <laughs> in fact i'm sure it wasn't intentional but there you go it's at 1.5 speed randy i'm not sure it was intentional but i wasn't i wouldn't be surprised if it was caught during the design process and they're like that's fine it's not such a huge deal and they left it in for simplicity sake to just keep the singular word for assist rather than introducing like Blocking assist and fouling assist, etc. Mm. No, I, I don't. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they didn't have a clue. <laughs> to be honest, like a lot of the other things. Like, apparently all of the playtesters, none of them knew you could use multiple rerolls in one turn. Just like it wasn't spotted by anybody. Wow, rerolling the hit on Morg is rowdy, isn't it, right? Like, you're looking at potentially overtime here for Nick. Yeah. And you've, only got, you've only got five rerolls. I know that sounds stupid, but... You know he's got tackle on everybody, so you really haven't got any dodge on this team. So that was a bit that was a bit rowdy. Like you're not going to kill him. You haven't got a, you know, you haven't got a big gang foul in or anything. Uh, so yeah, that was a bit rowdy. And what's the? I mean, the upside I guess is he doesn't he doesn't get to hit you back. But mm. I mean, he doesn't get a three dice back immediately. Is the upside on the knockdown? That's really it because you can't predict. There's no real value in getting an hour break and injuring more without claw, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was really weird by Nick. Really weird. Good day, Nick. Like, he wasn't getting a huge foul in. Like, fair enough, he was going to get a foul in, right? With sneaky, get dirty player, but <laughs> he wasn't going to get. He was going to get, like, a, a one assist foul or something. No, no, no well, assist. Well, maybe foul. it would have been, like, a three assist, three assist foul, maybe. I don't he think so. Like, look where he pushed him. He was here. He had guard on either side. Well, of him. He had, did he, I thought he had a chain push, though. He could have pushed him out to the right, I thought. On the block, mm. not back. He pushed him back there on that push, but I think on the knockdown he could have pushed him out to the right, and then maybe had a chain push. Oh yeah, so push him yeah. down. Yeah. Or had a three or four assist foul, something like that. Yeah, if he was maybe. if he was hitting from here, then he could have pushed him there. Yeah. Hmm. Still, still, I don't think it's that exciting. I'm not sure it's worth the reroll anyway. No. The ball's going to be a little bit exposed here. Bit rowdy. He's probably going to foul. I'm assuming here using his guard assist. Yep. But it's or still a bit rowdy. Foul. Gets the KO. And yep, three additional assists because of uh, guard. It really is amazing, like how good that changes for 
for Bash teams. Like we saw it for an Orc team getting loads of guard assists. And now obviously the Dwarves getting loads of guard assists. Seeing it here, um, it does show how good it is, but it also kind of shows how, um, I think, flavorfully and thematically it kind of lines up. Like, you get the players all in a scrum, and then in the dog pile, someone gets fouled, which I think <laughs> is appropriate. I think yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, Rather does. than the uh, way it works in Blood Bowl 2 in previous editions, where it's like, oh, there's this player isolated over here. Now all of the team is going to run over there, and the ref will not notice what's happening. <laughs> they can't see. They can't figure out what's happened. <laughs> Second Ed was great. You know, the, the refs had line of sight. So you had, to, you had to screen, like, an actual physically screen the ref so he couldn't see your foul and stuff. <laughs> Brilliant. Or you could just hit the ref and foul the ref. So you see, you could make it so that the one ref couldn't see the other ref. You had two refs. So you could make it so one ref couldn't see the other ref and take out the ref and stuff like that. Second edition seems fun. Yeah, well, second edition was, of... was really fun. Crazy stuff, yeah. like crazy stuff, you know, and it took hours and hours and hours to play a game. But like <laughs> flavorfully, lo loads of it was really cool. But yeah, not, not a great game, you know, overall. I'm sure from a technical standpoint it's not it's not a you know not a good game but incredibly fun and and thematic yes is thematic a yeah. word maybe yeah no. flavorful works as well mm, yeah flavorful see if i'm here man i need to play war till sometime but now I'll be on Blood Bowl 2, of course. So you could make 25 bucks for 100 hours of work. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but I mean, I'll be playing Blood Bowl 1, I content and all that kind of stuff. It's still content, isn't it? You'll be miserable and grinding, just like a real job. You'll be a real boy again, Jim. Mm. Yeah, maybe I won't do it. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> no one, no one. Uh, I'll take the take the prize for being the best person. That uh, Jim realizes ideas are horrible. You know, it's by accident sometimes. <laughs> Blood Bowl Top Gun. Why are people playing? You're right, Squirrel. Why would anyone play Blood Bowl ever? This is a horrible idea. It's not. That wasn't what I was saying. I don't care. I'm throwing it all in the trash. Yeah. Yeah, that was great, wasn't it? <laughs> Me just trying to argue that you should have some kind of tournament or in, in school competition thing. You're like, you're right. All of it into the garbage. Yeah, yeah, it was. I remember that. Yeah, you were right though. <laughs> I, the argument I you were you're having with me in your own head i was apparently right it wasn't the argument i was trying to have yeah <laughs> but, trying to but, make. but you were right in my head and that's the <laughs> most important place to be right really <laughs> i suppose the imagined imagined me was correct so halfway <laughs> halfway correct for me <laughs> i'm just not sure it's worth like a three assist foul and more I mean, maybe, right? You're sevens to break a Xavier, aren't you? No, you're eleven to break it, aren't you? So you need eights. Eights to break a Xavier. Uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, no, sevens 11. to break it. Sevens because you're a dirty player. But then you stick skull on the other side, I think. Mm. So you need, you need nines to get a removal after that. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe it's okay, right? Because he gets to move afterwards, so that... that that alleviates yeah, a lot of the problem of making that foul, actually. Also, not having more for a turn is pretty devastating for the Like, mm. you can see it, just like, oh, this seems a lot worse without yeah. Morg, isn't it? Yeah. It looks like a normal dwarf team <laughs> against yeah. a super elf team, huh? Yeah. Well, no, the positionally shtick, positionally, but that that's the thing, the sneaky git part. Like, you know, the sneaky git makes not the failure to break fine, but it makes the positional cost which was the problem fine the failure does went up just more owls generally because it me or it shifts the value so much because now you're basically just rolling a send off if you're when you're rolling on the removal table really um yeah. so your value just increases so high yep and fouling has always had a slightly better 
more generous value than we associate with it in part because of the position, but like you only needed to be have like two assists on armor on an armor value seven player with dirty player for key value. Like and really you could just kinda do dirty player on an armor value seven player if it was a war dancer, for example, and you'd probably be getting value out of it. Yeah. Um so it's just the way it works, right? Like that's the thing you're not you're not getting like the problem is you're not getting like forty percent of a war dancer, are you? Like do you know what I mean? That's the thing. Yes. It would be good if you were if you were losing if you were losing sixty percent of your linemen and taking forty percent of a war dancer, exactly, that would be yeah, a great it's, play. It's but just it's very high variance. Yeah. yeah. It's not like war dancers have health points, so you're not like losing like a, a player that has forty hit points and you're taking away sixty from a war dancer or something like that. Yeah. Even. But yeah, it, 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 it's anything I want less than health and blood pool. I'm, I'm struggling to come up with it because hit points and bubble seems like a miserable idea. So don't, don't, no one take that as an idea. No <laughs> one do that. What's interesting is, that, yeah, as you say, like just how much worse this team looks without Morg. So fair enough. Maybe, maybe, maybe Nick was right to uh, be do you know rerolling that hit and trying to get the hits, the fouls in on Morg because you know mm -hmm. he's already lost one of his two stars and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now if you can take the other one out uh, imagine if he didn't have Morg at all because he'd taken a wizard <laughs> hey hey <Yeah>. banter <laughs> I feel like he, I... he, Andre hasn't 3D'd with Morg enough honestly I feel like he hasn't used Morg enough it seems like a great turn to 3 dice with Morg as you go for this hit with, on the three die, and then, yeah, and now Steam it frees up this yeah. right side to go up. Yeah. 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 Only two turns left after this, so has to get moving. And and the right side's correct. some works there, so that was the right play. You it's maybe want to base up even here to force the elves to do some dodges and maybe eat, eat a reroll or two ahead of overtime because you're playing for OT. Yeah, it's, it's tricky, isn't it? It's, also, what's tricky is knowing which one of Nick's elves is the strength four one. <laughs> oh, God. It really does suck that you, you, know, you can't see on the skill overlay who's got stats. Yeah. That is apparently coming soon. <laughs> the uh, stat up indicators. God, getting two assists there. Like, it's amazing how good it is. It's actually amazing how good it is. Meanwhile, Nick's hair is just, um... <laughs> it's happening. Yep. Dream can't see it, but we can. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty special. He's probably saying, Oh my goodness. <laughs> The crabs I gave my flatmates were the best crabs you could ever get, okay? <laughs> Random, but thanks for that, Flux Dream. He hasn't got many players left now, has he, all of a sudden? With the guy stunned, the other guy on the wrong side of the ball, he's only got six elves to get in the way Touring somehow. Almost seems likely through the uh, dwarves now. It's going to be, next turn is going to be, I think, trickier than this one. Though. It's ASDK. I mean, can I go um, back? The turn after next is going to be trickier than this upcoming one. The dwarves. I think the elves are going to be a bit easier now to, once you pick a side, it becomes easier for the dwarves to, to play. Mm, I, guess, I guess he does, oh god, the sneaky git. Oh, what? He just didn't re-roll that. Oh, no, it was dodge. He double one did. <laughs> Oof. Double one did. If only he'd been playing a DACA and his offense would have been ruined by that snake eyes. <laughs> Bad play to roll the double one there. Very Classic bad wonder, play. like a land war in Asia. Never do that and never roll snake eyes. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's not a smart move to, to roll double ones, honestly. Now he can get right forward with the ball. I guess that's what he's going to do. Blitz that other guy. 
Mm, I thought he might have got further That's, forward. Yeah, I would like to be next to Morg. Decent big. Well, hmm. I'm just thinking if you're next to Morg, it probably maybe incentivizes basing more for now. Morg might be more maybe more likely to be freed up next turn to block whoever's on the ball off because someone's going to get on the ball almost certainly. So, I think probably the play was to blitz this guy first to see what happened. Yeah. Mm. And then and then position the ball based on if this runner can come through diagonally and get in front with the GFIs maybe and stuff. Maybe should have just blitzed with Morg actually. <laughs> Thinking about it, maybe Morg should yeah. just 3D blitzed. Maybe Morg should be the one to do it, yeah. And then he's who you want to move first anyway. Like he did move him first. So maybe while moving he should have uh, made a 3D B. I'm giving you more information. Hello, Miss Tree. It's 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 it is Ghetto Cabal Vision restreaming Gadenix stream. <laughs> um, every every match has been covered for the YouTubes by restreaming the originals streamers VOD very nicely. They all they all agree to stream and uh, allow the restream for the YouTubes. That's good. Even though Yak just told them they agreed, they still agreed. <laughs> <laughs> Still agreed, okay. <laughs> Jack used his uh, lawyerly negotiating powers of putting it in a contract that no one really read and then forcing it. <laughs> Is he still going to try to get in the way? It's probably not worth trying to get in the way now, I don't think. You just go for an uphill or, or just run away and... Go for a sneaky git file. <laughs> Where's the sneaky git? Oh, it's in a real bad place. Ugh. I guess you could blitz this guy, couldn't you? And then dodge out and foul him. Yeah, what's so a blitz this guy, foul him. He's a stand firm as well. This is definitely the play. Well, I think Nick's being crazy oh. here. 3D him and foul him. So looking at him work it again? Just facing the ball. That seems crazy. I guess he can dodge in to hit the ball through more because he can 1D him right with his strength 4. Mm -hmm. And it's a 5 plus with a reroll. So, uh, ah, okay. No, no, I don't know what he's doing. Oh, I hate this. I hate this from Nick. I actually hate this. That reroll seems aggressive. Yeah, because you can't, you can't stop him just going. Laterally. You literally can't stop him going laterally. <laughs> He's used two re-rolls. Oh. If you had size up, I think I like this. If there, this right guy had size up, I think I like it a lot more. But Look now at this, it's still though. Just... Look at this. Yeah. This is... Trash from Nick. I mean, no, and Nick's good at blood ball, but this is weird, really weird. There's, there's not enough sidestep on the field to justify this. If this was more sidestep, maybe you could justify it, right? Yeah, you, I don't know how you could justify it. My play of blitzing this stand firm and fouling him out was a million times better. This is just an instant two D and score. <laughs> Or just dodge, like not even two. Oh, is this diving tackle? Ah, okay, this is diving tackle. So, is it diving tackle? Yeah, I think that's diving, diving tackle. tackle. Yeah, that's diving tackle. But I mean, you can just blitz him, right? Mm. Power him seventy-five percent of the time. Instant two D on him. Is he a is he a blitzer? No, he's a lineman. He's not even a blitzer. That I think he might weird. even be able to just. Yeah, it's just yeah. instant 2D. That's all you have to do. And then a 2, yeah. a two plus to score. That was terrible from Nick. That's like he used. I mean, no, I'm not being not being mean to Nick, but that was uh, that was really weird, right? Like that was such an easy solution, and he used two re rolls to to like get to that when he could have yeah, he you... could have gang fouled a, a stand firm. <laughs> I don't know. That's interesting. That's interesting that he thought that way. Maybe he just like tunnel visioned and didn't see how weak it was mm -hmm. like that's the only explanation but yeah that can out. happen especially against um a dwarf team is you don't you don't see the you he didn't see the wood for the, the he, did, he didn't see the wood for the morgue 
Yeah, you can misevaluate, um, especially in these kind of square based games, um, diagonal speed too, right? It's mm. very easy to mm. not evaluate that moving sideways is not much, you're often not giving up that much speed um, mm. and going straight forward, especially if they're that close already. Yeah, that, I mean, that was that was the good thing about getting that far forward, wasn't it? That it did give him the lateral option. And yeah, like, you know, Nick could have fouled one of these two guys, might have got him out, and then might have had a chance of a one turn. But as it is, he has his only chance is a quick snap again. Um, <laughs> Andre didn't set up uh, to give him a frenzy hit like his like his first round opponent did. And then his, his, in his second round, he got he got a quick snap, didn't he? So he's been he's been uh, he's been very lucky as uh, Nick so far. So he might get he might get a quick snap. You never know. I mean, the one turn is impossible, but wouldn't it, like this is the one I'm saying, Stick. Had Nick fouled, he does not have jugs. Had Nick gang fouled the stand firm, the one turn might have been possible. <laughs> That's what I was saying. Mm. Sorry, Muppet. Like it was worth. It was I, like I think it was way the better play to to gang foul that, you know, blitz and gang yeah. foul that that stand firm to try and make the just to try and make the one turn possible. If nothing else, it opens it up as well, potentially for overtime, right? Mm. So you can get, you might give yourself two chances at a one turn, not just this one. Yep. 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 Well, sorry, J Five. I believe Fami is 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 streaming War Tales right now, so you know, by all means, by all means, fuck off if you want. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if he's off J five, but you know, <laughs> you I don't know if he's streaming it now or not, but he might be. No, oh, he advertised to his stream, but he isn't. Ah, oh, scumbag. Glorious. No, I won't give him. in until wow. I'm victorious. Glorious I will defend. notification. I will defend. How many beavers, Jimmy? Wow, six whole years. Unbelievable, isn't it? Three months ahead of Squirrel, dude. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tony. Unbelievable. Uh, that's that's outrageous, isn't it? Like, that's the new measure for the amount of beavers is by Squirrel Dudes. <laughs> three months more beavers than Squirrel Dudes. Yeah, three more. You had, you had, you had, the, you had the better number, didn't you? That was the thing. You had the better number, but, but Tony's got the higher number. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many beavers. That's that's almost too many beavers to count, isn't it? Um, like it's actually hard to count that many beavers. <laughs> how many is it? Eighteen? Is it eighteen? Beaver I don't know how to count beavers. So yeah, it's Just eighteen four. beaver pregnancies, six years. Unbelievable. Thank you very much. I'd have to do the math on my hands. Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot can't. Hey, um, so it goes to overtime, and Andre won the toss. Unbelievable! That's that exciting, chance. isn't it? There's a mm -hmm. chance. Yeah, I think if Nick won the, wins the toss, he wins the game, right? But yeah, with yeah, Andre yeah. winning the toss, it's it's still it's still open to. Uh... Hey, Tony. If this was a Blood Bowl 2, you would say that Andrew has more rerolls, but really it just matters for winning the drive, not for kicks. Correct. Wow, big removal. Nick hasn't used his wizard. Maybe there was a, a like a KO at some point he could have used previously. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously you're using it on a KO now, but yeah. Mm. I don't think he's actually taking that much attrition. He really um, hasn't, no. It is full eight turnover time. Yes, you'd look out there. That is, that is implemented correctly in, uh, well, not only in Blood Bowl three, but also in like friendly matches. There is the option to have it go to overtime. So yeah, there, there's no alternate overtimes, but that is the uh, the actual rules is, is uh, a full, a full half. Rerolls are no longer a factor in kicks. No kicks are now just a straight roll off. Um, Hilariously, um, I uh, 
I watched some lead well I, yeah I watched a Legion League match um, Russ Lone streamed it and uh, <laughs> he, he went to kicks with his opponent and the game just ends instantly and you don't see any animations you don't see any notifications it's just the game's over <laughs> and then you find out after the game's over that you won or lost <laughs> it's absolutely terrible <laughs> Kind of fits with how they. I honestly wonder with how the end of the game is designed. They just someone did the math. They're like, you know, only one quarter of the players are actually going to see the end of the game. <laughs> Everyone else is going to bail out before or concede. So, who cares? It's not good the point. most important part. It's an actual good point. Well, wow, that's great. You'd look at. I mean, yeah, he's, he's pretty unflappable. Unflappable is a pretty good, uh, pretty good word. We need to turn a flat part at some point. <laughs> that that should be your Chaos Renegades team. Should be flat part and Crusher and whatever the Ogre would be. Oh. Yeah, that is a good. New thing. Chaos All Stars. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good thinking. Also, Nick is going for the team split here. I, mean, I like playing more active defense in this half, so. I mean, it's a pretty good opportunity, to be fair. It's yeah. a pretty good opportunity to get through. Bet he wishes he had two more rerolls. <laughs> I slightly wish Time Bank, you got some extra time for overtime, or that it was done by half and not by the full game. But mm -hmm. It's neither here nor there. But I also have always been curious about the idea of um, just moving to a full Time Bank system, though I know you hated for the idea of AFK. But yeah. I am... I am intrigued by the idea of moving to a full-time bank system that is i think in a perfect world maybe right but yeah in the actual real world of these 70 percent of games that are conceded would then turn into 70 percent of the time you have to wait 40 minutes or, or you know maybe seven minutes yeah. of inactivity before your opponent concedes or whatever especially again this is the issue of um concession limits as well of course is that it induces that kind of bad behavior as well. Mm, indeed. The rules have suddenly coming for Nick, which, man, if that's not timing. <laughs> and they're, of course, all injuries and not KO, so we can't do anything about them. The apothecary is just kind of a weird thing. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much, pretty much just a, uh, just a, KO thing now, isn't it? Most for the most part, especially like this being res. Yeah, it's just KOs or um, badly hurts in the first half in the early turns, basically. Yeah. We're all power up allers now. <laughs> Which isn't so bad. It just kind of reduces the. It's just kind of the nature of the apothecary being so unreliable for some Oof. reason. Oh, he's getting the foul. I was, thought that was weird, right? Because Nick pointed to the correct square for, for for that guy, and it was here. And he didn't go mm -hmm. there. So I wonder if that will encourage Nick to try and attack this cage corner or not. But then it's hard because all of his players are over here. So maybe that was the correct one. But GFIing seemed pretty bad. Hello, lot. Subscriber Lod, and therefore a real person, unlike Flux Streamer. <laughs> uh, the answer in France is almost always there's someone doing a protest because that's just what happens in France. Something yeah. happens, people get in the streets. Yeah. Yeah, they're on strike. Aren't they? Yeah, the refuse collectors is that is that the word? Garbage disposal, something like that. Say what you want about France, uh, they know how to get on strike. Yeah, they're pretty good at it. Yeah, they are really are. Yeah. It was. I've been to France one time, and on that one time, the bus had to get diverted because there was a strike going on. So. <laughs> oh man, that was a brutal one. Well, I guess at least he's like got the uh, sidestepper holding, but this is a pretty solid turn. He's, you know, Andrew's got now. 
I, I guess the question is always, do you 3D him or do you 2D him? And I, I, I guess it's pretty similar, isn't it? Uh, you know, slightly more likely to 2D him than 3D him, but then the 3D is mighty blood plus 2. So it's interesting. I think I would 3D him all the time. Until he goes for a 2D. Very greedy. <laughs> also kind of not as good, right? Like 3 Ding this guy is just better because your, your slow guy can only get to here anyway. And then you can 3D him and then you, you're further away from these. These can move as far over as they can. So, yeah. <laughs> Gadenic circling this player and it's like, yeah, I think you should I think you should have 3 d this guy and not 2 d him. But there you go. There might be more optimal choices, but also this feels like a rather done-and-done um, done drive in a lot of ways. There's just already a couple L's out, and feels hard for... Surprisingly hard for Nick for how to develop the team as to pressure the ball. Mm. Really wanted to GFI at the front here, didn't he? Like, the front is weaker than mm -hmm. KGI, yeah, so he's coming through to foul. Yeah, that's pretty. That's really nice, actually. Really nice foul. Shows at the front, but now the back is a little bit weak. So maybe... So guy. I always feel like if your oh, your back's a little bit weak, it's kind of a trap for the elves to focus too much onto that. So you can just advance, continue to advance forward yeah. past them, right? There's a chain here, though, isn't there? The uphill chain. Oh, and he's instantly, he's instantly yeah. looking at it. I think you have to. So I think just getting the ball down is so good. Yeah, and I, he's especially because you can. Especially because you can chain the ball back out, right? You can chain the ball back out in front by uh, blitzing from upright. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. he's got a guard there. I'm pretty sure this one's the strength fall. So yeah. it's just yeah, instantly so you guard into a 2D. And, and, yeah, yeah, it's you really good. Push it it's out gone. and you get a recovery. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you have to do the minus 2D first for a push. Yeah. Gets the push. Gets it. Now, that was the one hard part. <laughs> I do think you stand that player up because they're not going to be involved in the play otherwise. I, you use, I don't think you want to use a reroll on that dodge pointlessly. No. Oh, that wasn't the strength four. What is our strength four player? It must be stunned. It must be. It must be this one. I don't know. No, he was strength three, wasn't it? I don't know. Maybe it's the one up there. I thought, oh, getting a one D, the two D, the uphill for a one D isn't anywhere near as strong, is it? Ooh. No. I guess he was a strength four player badly hurt? I don't know. So, <laughs> Maybe. We, we can't click on the client to find it, so. No. No, we, we'll never know where the strength four is. <laughs> Which is only slightly, only slightly behind the people playing the game. <laughs> Still, um, the minus two dice to let him get quite a bit of players on the ball and a bit of pressure. So. Yeah, yeah, good ball pressure, which he needs right now. Mm. He's not going to be able to one turn. So, mm. that's far from over, Steve. Far from over. This is. Uh, this if he got the knockdown, it might have been over, but he did not get the knockdown, so it was not over. Mm. If he got the knockdown, he might have been able to two plus two plus and just run away, and the game would be over. Well, yes. not really even, because it even, you can't just score immediately. You would still need to stall, because of the overtime rules. It would be almost over, like, but the one reroll would make it not over. Like, at the end of the day, the reroll situation would make it not over. But it would be really, really close to not over, to over <laughs> had he got the knockdown, yeah. Size up's a pretty good skill sometimes. Hmm. And diving tackle, right? I'm pretty sure that's diving tackle that uh, yeah that the blitzers have. Size up diving tackle guard is a heck of a player. Frenzy is an unfortunate random skill to get, but you take what you can, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's a thing. You just just took it because he had to take something. That's a weird blitz choice for Morgue, but hmm, because. Still just a two on the ball. 
Oh, Ooh. okay. Just do a 5 plus. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I guess the failure isn't terrible, except for the case where it bounces out, but man, that is... Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit rowdy. <laughs> Maybe it's not diving tackle, and we'll never know. Maybe it's some other skill. I think I'm pretty sure it's diving tackle. I'm pretty sure Nick had diving tackle on his uh, on his blitzes, because uh, I'm pretty sure uh, Elliot was saying about Nick having diving tackle. So uh, I'm pretty sure it's diving tackle. I'm actually yep, that is diving tackle. I'm looking at skill images, so I have to. <laughs> Still on the Bible, and yeah, there you go. That was that is diving tackle. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> we've just got to guess at this point. Like the sprint show feet, you can tell right on that guy, the bludge. Uh, this, this, this catch, you can tell that's dodge, block, sidestep, sprint show feet. Um, that's pretty obvious. Obviously, the move nine guy. Um, that, like, the, the, the picture for the diamond tackle looks like daunts or something. I was, like it's shadow or something, but obviously it's an edge, so it's not. Yeah, it gets the pow. The 1D. The 1D pow. He does have a recovery kind of with the guy in the top, right? Yeah, the guy in the top can do some dodging to get down here. Yeah. Where oh! Go? Ooh, okay. So now actually. Oh, is that player prone? Okay, that makes it mm. less threatening. But a punt is actually kind of an interesting concept here. Hmm. Nick has suddenly also, perked up. <laughs> but, he yeah, wishes he had, but he wishes he had three rerolls right now. I don't I don't want to keep mentioning this, <laughs> but I can't yeah. not. That just seems so weird, honestly. It's the second dodge, I guess. Second dodge. Oh, he, near, he, didn't, he didn't declare the pass, and then he uh, repathed oh. it. Does he use his last reroll? The good thing is he's got his 51 seconds of time bank to think about this. He uses the one. Like, I, re I really hated that you only had 15 seconds, but, like, he's nearly used all his time bank here, Nick, hasn't he? Down to 47 seconds. Andrew has been playing much faster, yeah. Mm. I remember people were saying, you know, time bank and the time system scores for bash teams. Bash teams also are going to get more advantage out of the time bank a lot of the time because their turns are more straightforward in that way, so they're going to be using up more of the regular time, but they're not going to have big things, I don't think, as often as elf teams are. Mm. You can be my wingman interesting. Anytime. Super interesting. Bullshit. You can be mine. Four. Nolly, thank you very much for the raid. Absolutely glorious. Welcome, Nolly viewers, to uh, the wonderful world of Blood Bowl 3. <laughs> it's the best way to watch replay is by watching other people's videos of games. Yes. Yep. Thanks to Gdanik, who streamed this. Um, yep. Don't worry, Nolly. Nobody can. It's Blood Bowl 3. <laughs> Literally nobody can. And the few people that, that are okay with playing an absolutely, you know, garbage visual game, um, you know, have to endure millions of concedes and bugs and all sorts of other crap. Fantastic. Well, Andre's got three turns after this. But you know he's got the ball safe in a cage. Oof. The 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 animation for sure hands is proper annoying. Like they always show them failing. Yeah. If 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 they if they make the reroll, they still show them fail it the first time. It makes mm. it super super horrible to uh to do. Bit anxiety inducing, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I feel like. Morgan. Hey, Morgan did a thing. Um, I feel like Nick's best chances now is actually to get the kicks. I don't think because he can't score the one turn, and it's going to be very hard to get the score back. So. Yes. But how get does the he, kicks somehow. How does he get the how. kicks? There's another removal. Yeah. He's got five players. You know, I guess the best, best point of uh, passing abilities that gives you one more injury teams can just not use their apothecary on ever yes indeed yep so he's got so he's got seven players so he's got six upright but one is miles away so he's basically got five players to defend with this turn 
The one Which miles away is, is moving tricky. nine, so it can get back into the field, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but not not super relevant, right? No, it can't get totally in front. Yeah. And also, like, this is a really good spot for the dwarves. Like, they've got their whole team in one big blob. So mm -hmm. Really, really nice, actually, despite the fact they lost the ball. <laughs> it's looking pretty desperate. They're actually desperate. spaced out now that the elves, can't, so the elves can't mark multiple and try and hope for some, like, one and nines on blocks even. Like, they have to individually mark players. There's always going to be stuff freed up next turn as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, this is a, a PA bus blitzer. There you go. So speaking, of, talking about PA. Uh, did you see that? Is that why you mentioned it? Yes, it? Yeah. I did happen to notice that. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't apropos of nothing. <laughs> and you know, unlike everything else, it wasn't a total non sequitur. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, he's got to try and clear the the sidestep because he's got diving tackle. <laughs> Like he can't try a five plus dodge again. So this is actually this is pretty good from Nick. Pretty good, isn't it? But the guard can go in here, clear these, he goes in there, blitz him, and then you've got just about enough in front. can't hit him until later though because he's got sidestep. Well he'll just do a 5 plus dodge yeah. We've already seen it so it's going to happen again. He, no 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 he, he's just going to move the sneaky get right and then yeah and then so he but the problem is he can't make this hit until after he's made the blitz. Not sure if the correct size up scored though. I guess that's the correct one. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's gotta be. Well, it doesn't have to be, but it seems like it is. <laughs> Intuitively. Now does he I think he has to hit this armor seven guy, right? Like, okay, he's got blood step and everything, but he goes where he wants next turn anyway, so he might as well just bloody punch him. Well, he hasn't got blood step because he's got tackle, but do you know what I mean? Like, he's yeah, he's got side steps. You just gotta hit him. Well, I mean, I what's the fourth side step? Mm, I think maybe more than. Okay. He's on a seven, you know. You're two dicing him. So even if he side steps to here, so what? I guess he's I mean... on a guard now, so he can't one d him. Yeah, so that's why mm -hmm. I didn't hit him. So because so, he would yeah. side step away, and then yeah. he would uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd be able to one d. Well, he can still... There's just no tackle on that side to break through or into the cage. I suppose it's not so bad. It's just going to be a one dice on a dodger without tackle, which is just terrible. Mm. And Nick doesn't have any wrestle. Maybe that a player had wrestle, you take the minus two dice. Maybe you still take the minus two dice. No, no, no. If you had a wrestle or a tackle, then maybe you take the minus two dice. Mm -hmm. You don't have either of those. No, yeah, no. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's going through it in my head. Life. <laughs> life for everyone to hear there you go that's what an that's what a thoroughly average level player who doesn't play at all goes through in their brain <laughs> and uh hello andy this is the semi-final uh this is the second semi-final eliod won the first semi-final with his dark elves his gigantic dark elves the highest tv team in the tournament and now we have gadenic with very large pro elves versus andry's little dwarves that could i mean they've they've got a chance but the, these side, these diamond tackle guys are really, really keeping him, really keeping him in it at the moment. It is reasonable to be worried about the future of the game based on all the numbers and indicators we have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. It is unfortunate that the best thing I can say to console you is that your anxiety is not unfounded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, as predicted, Blood Bowl 3 is killing t 2 and 3. Blood Bowl 3 isn't dying, Jim. It hasn't even started yet. 
Yes. Yes, that's what some people are saying, you know, like, uh, the real launch will be at the start of season one. And then when that's a failure, they'll say, the real launch will be the start of season two. And then when that's a failure, they'll say, the real launch will be the start of season three. <laughs> the game is good, or the game will be complete when it is good. Until then, it's not complete, so you can't judge it yet. Mm-hmm. Even though it's not an early access game, or being advertised as one thing ever happens at least, but, you know, it's an incomplete game. Do you hand off so to more? don't judge it yet. No, you can't, because he can die and tackle you. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really kind of wild how deluded some people have been. Um, but yeah, like it just is what it is, isn't it? The thing is, I talk about the October crossplay. Uh, it's supposedly like going to be about August when they have the uh, reconnect, right? But but even then, it doesn't matter. Like like I don't care about all the reconnect and stuff because it's it's a chore to play, as PC just alluded to in chat. Like it. So that you know, the few people who are playing, like, I mean, Artemis <laughs> and Nick and Elliot, but Elliot stopped. <laughs> so like, Artemis and Nick <laughs> and Spiritorlog, <laughs> the three people left playing Blood Bowl three, um, they don't want to play it because of all the problems with it. But like, but even if they fix all those problems, how many people want to play a game that's an absolute chore to play, and? You know, really hard to see what the hell's happening and who wants to watch it on Twitch. Like, oh, really nice, uh, really nice. 2D on the ball. Gets the pow. Turn 23. You're telling me there's a chance? Okay. Still got his reroll. Doesn't follow. I guess he doesn't want to recover on that player quite badly. So. Um. Hey, Morg being agility 3, actually relevant right now, by the way. Yeah. He's actually kind of an annoying score of threat. Yeah, not... The problem is using the reroll on there was so horrible, right, that I think I would have just followed and then left him deactivated. But I guess this makes sense. To be fair, this makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, double tag Morg and then you don't lose in normal time. Not losing in normal time is more important than maybe winning, right? The um, a thing also to history with Blood Bowl 3 and whether or not it'll kill the community. It's only at most going to damage the Steam Blood Bowl community and the console Blood Bowl community, but Blood Bowl survived Games Workshop not being not participating in the game for like a decade, so he'll participate and and also ran French Studio not participating in making a good game for a few years too. Yes. But it's very, very sad. Um, there is I don't know the demographics of Blood Bowl, so maybe there's a point where like everyone just ages out of it, but because Every hobby is in the practice of dying and trying to get new people in to keep it from that. But yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Oh, Duble skulls. Landry well, has to read all that. There's, there's no decision to be made. <laughs> I guess the only reason you don't reroll that is if there are if there's equity and the elves don't have a scoring threat. Yeah. There, maybe in that case you don't reroll because your chance of scoring is too low. Oh, this is nice. Reroll. This is a nice chain look. Really mm. nice. Really nice. Yep. Nicely spotted. Yeah, really nice. Nice tonight. Three plus handoff and more declares points. the handoff. If, if oh, only diced. Diced. Is that a wizard? What would more possibly have done in that situation? Hey, <laughs> banter. If only Nick had two rerolls left. Just, just saying. <laughs> oh, he doesn't need them. Outrageous. Oh. Oh, tackle. <laughs> wow. And two kicks we go. See, oh. match finished. Rem- return to main menu. Who won? <laughs> Nick, <laughs> it just does. It just, it just does the kicks. And it just says finished. <laughs> Fucking hell! It's absolutely what a unbelievably terrible way to end tied games. Like it was, you know, we all like mocked the the kick animations for Blood Bowl Two and that, but at least like you know, at least have something right to to, to show you the game's finishing. Like it was at least a montage of just like 
some kicks or something. Like, you, you can do a montage that doesn't have all the players taking 10 years to line up and do the kick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. Unbelievable. But look a dog, Nick. I mean, that was pretty funny, right? Both both teams had a pretty good dice to win near the end. So very, very exciting. Great chain push by Andre. And pretty yeah. well played by Andre overall. And uh, pretty well played by I feel by like Andre maybe overall. deserved to get that winning. I think he probably the worst dice overall. He definitely had the worst team and played really well to get himself in a chance to win. Yep. Yep, really, really, really well played. Yeah, I don't know why I said pretty well. Really well played by both. Um, commiserations to Andre. Congratulations to Gdanik. Thank you very much, Squirrel Dude. Absolutely glorious having you in the booth. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.